Okay, so last database we're looking at today, coming back to this popular database list, is this Project Muse. And I really, really love Project Muse, um, but it's a database that a lot of people don't go to first or they connect to it through something else. And that's a shame because Project Muse has fantastic research within it. Um, searching within it, they have you can browse or you can search within it. Um, I strongly recommend searching as opposed to this browsing option. Um, Project Muse is a multi-subject search, just like all of our other popular database. So it, it contains information on every subject under the sign. Really great research for the social sciences and humanities. Wouldn't it be my first place I'd go for the hard sciences? Um, things like biology, chemistry, physics, that kind of stuff. But it does pull in a lot of really good research for that. Um, yes, I accept the cookies. Um, one of the things I love about Project Muse is it pulls really good academic peer-reviewed research, but it also pulls academic book chapters. So remember how we've talked all semester about you can have academic books to where each chapter is written by different people, and so each chapter can be read individually? that it's more like essays or articles bound together as opposed to a book that has to be read consecutively the whole way through to be understood. Project Muse is a database that pulls a lot of those individual book chapters, that they digitize them and are offering the chapters one at a time as opposed to just doing peer-reviewed journal articles or newspaper articles or things like that. So really good place for research. Um, you see Put in your search terms, you have your filter options. Every now and then this filter menu for some time reason takes a while to come up. It's like it doesn't want to fully load when I first search. If you're seeing that, kind of scroll around, click on things, and then it tends to appear. Maybe I just have bad internet or a bad computer. I don't know, but it is there. Um, so you have it pre-limits only content I have access to. Leave that alone. Um, that we subscribe to a particular section of Project Muse, not everything. So you can leave that. This is another one that you can see. Okay, you can limit to content type of books. You can limit to journals, specifically articles or reviews. Publisher uh, series, I really wouldn't look at those limiters if you're just doing kind of a big search with your keywords on your topic. If you're looking specifically for a particular article that you had found previously and you're trying to find it again, that might be helpful, but a lot of these limiters aren't things that students use really heavily. Um, kind of with the research area, language would be the biggest one, but down at the bottom, you do have your publication year. So, Anytime is going to bring everything, but that you, then you can limit to things published just within 2020, things published in the last two years, three years, five years, 10 years. So it kind of has the preset limiters with that. Um, so if you're looking for certain things that are current, that can be a helpful limiter. Other things. Um, so just like every other database, you get your sort by relevance option, and then you get your actual articles that you're finding. So you're seeing you get kind of... Uh, your, whether it has the PDF full text or if you just want to view things. Um, click on the title, you get more of that bibliographic information. So you get the title up here at the top, um, of which is the journal. So historically speaking is the name of the journal. You can see that because underneath it you have title of the journal, volume, issue, date. Anytime you're seeing those volume and issue and date and page numbers is something you should be finding here somewhere, um, that's giving you what the journal title is. Also, if you click on it, you see it's bringing you to the entire journal page. So if you're confused of which is the article, which is the journal title, look around for where is the volume and the issue number. Um, that's typically gonna be what the journal title does. If you're still confused, click on things. What does it bring you? Um, this also brings you who the publisher is, uh, that this one, that historically speaking, is published by John Hopkins University Press. This isn't something you need for citations. Uh, that's extra information. Yay. It's published by academic university. John Hopkins is very, very well-known, real reputable university, really known for their hospital and pediatric and children's research. Um, but you wouldn't need that for the citation. Every now and then students try to bring that in. Journal article, look at what you need to create that APA citation. The publisher is not one of them. Now, if this was a book, you would need that. But since it is an article, you're saying you definitely don't. Scroll down, that's where you get the journal title, or the, not the journal, the article title and the published 
for Eric Arnson. It also brings you that bio of who is Eric Arnson, professor of history at the University of Illinois in Chicago, former president of the Historical Society. So it's giving you those credentials of who is this person, why should we listen to him. Scroll down, you then get the PDF or you then get the HTML full text. And so it brings the full text on the page, but you're seeing you have two options here to download the PDF. And once again, why should you do that? Um, you get the download option here. You also get this little tab over here on the right. Um, remember that the PDF brings you what the article actually looked like when it was published. So you're getting all the formatting, you're getting the images with the text that it's describing. You're also getting those page numbers of this journal, things that you need to create those citations. So PDF is also easier to print and to save your research. So if you have that option, I recommend using those. However, if you're just scrolling down and reading, all of the information is here. So definitely look at that. Um, other helpful info, you have options to save your research. And so you can create an account with my Muse library with Project Muse. Um, you can <coughs> share things with social media. Um, you have this recommend, and so you can enter the email address. And so the idea behind this is like they want to suggest this to someone else. You can put your own email address there, and it will send that to your email. So you do have the option to email it to yourself, um, and it will send you the information to get back to this page and the link and the PDF full text options. So that is there. You also have the view citation option, just like everywhere else. It's going to bring you this computer-created citation. Um, for this one is okay. Um, the only thing you'd have to consider is make sure it's keeping the formatting, make, so make sure it's keeping those italics, and that if when you copy and paste it into your work cited, if it goes down to a second line, you need to add the hanging indent. But yeah, just like always, you do need to proofread these for accuracy. To be able to proofread them for accuracy, you have to know how to cite correctly. So keep that in mind, but it does have that citation. And then you got that additional information, which is all the way down to the bottom of that's where you're seeing those page numbers there. You don't need an ISSN. You're not publishing, you're not buying this thing. Um, tells you when it was actually put up on Project Muse, if it's open access kind of deal. A lot of that information you don't need, but those page numbers is one that you would definitely need. So Project Muse, fantastic research. I love this. Um, I find great things for students every time I show them Project Muse. Definitely take a look at this database. All right, so that kind of wraps up our discussion of popular databases. You may notice I didn't talk about Nexus Uni. That's because we're going to talk about it on Wednesday when we talk about newspapers. Um, these are our popular databases. They're multi-subject, cover every subject under the sun. They are really great resources that are easy to use. Lots of people start their research here if they're looking at individual databases. But you have all of these other databases listed by subject. You have databases specific to psychology, to political science, to African-American studies, et cetera. So think about what is your subject area, and then you can look at those databases specific for that subject. Because you're going to have very particular tools for each subject area. You also might want to think that most topics don't just fall under one subject. Um, so if we're looking at learning styles for elementary students and talking about, okay, do some students learn better by seeing things done? Do they learn better by reading? Do they learn better by doing that kind of learning style thing? Well, definitely if we're talking about it in a classroom, we want to talk about education. But that subject area is also tied to how you think and how your brain operates. So that would also fall under psychology. Psychology and education overlap a ton. If you're searching for one, you need to be searching for the other. Um, other topics that can kind of overlap. So literature is going to overlap with history. Theater is going to overlap with literature and history. Um, music typically overlaps with literature and history and theater as well, that they all kind of tie together. Uh, biology could be talking specifically about a biology class, but anything you could be talking about medical biology. So if we're looking at biomed research, we might want to look at nursing and medicine databases. Um, if you're looking within uh, chemistry, Chemistry kind of stands on its own. Um, anything with sociology could also apply to social work. Social work falls under sociology. So think about how do your databases overlap and look at both subject areas. All right, got one more short video for today talking about your assignments, and then we'll wrap up for Monday.